All right, now we're going to create a couple pads with Maelstrom. Pads are really easy with Maelstrom because of the great grain tables that it starts out with. Uh, some of my very favorites are the ambient chords. It's almost hard to create a bad patch when you're starting with something that good. But what I like it most for are vocal uh, pads. And one of the reasons is, of course, just the wide variety of vocal patches it, sorry, vocal grain tables it comes with. We're going to start with Angel Choir and maybe change it to something after. So. We'll start with Angel Choir. And let's get more of a, a pad envelope shape here. And raise our polyphony. All right, so it's pretty good on its own, but I'm going to use some filtering now to make it a little bit more interesting. I told you before that I generally don't do regular bandpass stuff with the bandpass filters, uh, but as I said, it can be nice to use them as two different frequency splits when you use them in parallel. So I'll show you how that works. We're going to send this Angel Choir both to filter B and filter A separately in parallel. So to do that, we go like that and make sure that this toggle isn't set and switch them to band pass. And we're going to use the spread knob here and that's going to spread the outputs of the filters to opposite sides. And I don't want the patch to end up like that, but I do want to use it so that I can hear the filters on ev well on each ear so it makes it easier to hear exactly what each filter is doing. So you can hear them adjusting the right ear there. So we'll pick a frequency here. And now we'll choose a different resonance and frequency for the other side. And then we can pan them back to the center with no spread. We can continue on and get a little bit of a slow modulation of the of both filters going. And whereas in Thor, we might have to do some mod matrix uh, mechanics for that, uh, we can easily just have the modulator be sent to both filter A and filter B, and then raise our filter frequency slightly. Choose a very slow rate, and then you can hear the results. You can hear the sound is pretty resonant, so personally I would add some compression onto this. So that's a really great sounding, easy to create vocal pad patch.
And if you wanted variance on that theme, of course, you could very easily just change the grain table and you'd get something quite different. seems to actually work better with the breath voices, probably because there's so much high frequency content in this grain table. All right, I'll save that one for you. Now let's start from scratch and create a different pad using one of the ambient chord waveforms or grain tables that I mentioned before. That's a pretty complex sound. Personally, I'd like something more uh, standard kind of uh, underneath it. So let's uh, find a saw waveform here. I think I'll leave it on the root note. All right, so we've got a good start there. How about going with something instead of uh, heavily filtering it or, or trying something like that. Why don't we just get kind of a, a gated sound to it by uh, modulating the volume of both oscillators. Keep in mind that these modulators are polyphonic LFOs, so when I play those notes, if you don't play the notes on the beat, you're going to have volume changes that kind of beat against each other. It can be a little bit of a mess. So what's helpful instead is to use a monophonic LFO. And to do that, you can route any LFO from any device into Maelstrom. In this case, I'm going to use something a little bit different, use a subtractor. So we'll just flip the rack around here and we'll send LFO1 out to the level. All right, now we just need to go in here and sync up this LFO, set its rate uh, to 1 8th. We 
can very easily adjust the amount of modulation we'd like. So we could go with that, but I'm also thinking of something a little bit more complex. So why don't we try instead to create a Thor and use its step sequencer to modulate the volume of this patch. So we'll send the step sequencer number one curve out CV output one. to the level control. And now we'll just uh, draw in a curve here. How about, uh, we'll say eight steps. The nice thing about using Thor for this is that we can trigger it from a MIDI note so that every time we press a key, this, uh, I guess you could call it a gate sequence, or this volume sequence is starting from exactly where we want, which is the first step. So it's very simple to do that. We just set up a, a MIDI key gate triggering the step sequencer. So that way we have a really predictable way to uh, sequence up uh, a gate that goes well with our pad patch. Let's add a delay line and see what this uh, pad sounds like with a little bit of rhythmic delay. All right, so you could even take this farther if you wanted to. Uh, I can hear the next step that I would probably take. When you hold this pad down and then let go, you can see the gate stopping. So I'd probably try to figure out a way to fix that by maybe using an envelope to fade out this effect, this uh, gating effect. But that's a little bit outside the scope for this month. All right, so uh, there's two pads uh, quite quickly and easily created with Maelstrom.